Hello developers, how are you doing today? Welcome to your channel Tapascript where you learn things conceptually, you learn things fundamentally. Today, you and me together are going to build something cool. We are going to build something fundamentally, we are going to build something from the scratch. And I hope that at the end of the video, you, will, you are going to learn a lot of stuff. The tech stack that we are going to use to build the application is very trendy and I'm going to unfold them one by one such a way that you understand all the concepts very beautifully. Before we get started, as usual, a request from your teacher. If you have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe because I put a lot of effort in teaching you, in creating content for you, right? A subscription from your side will be great support. You can also join me as a member if you would like to. Without any further delay, let us see what we're going to build today. Let us build an e-learning platform using a headless CMS called KC. It's an extremely developer-friendly CMS that we will learn. And then the data and the content we create on KC will be able to interact with them using GraphQL. And finally, using the GraphQL endpoints into a Next.js application using App Router. How fun that is going to be. Let's do that. But before that, I want to show you how the app, this particular application may look like. Let's first realize what we are building and then get started to build it. That's right friend, we are going to build an e-learning platform, something like that you see on, on your screen. I have named this platform as Coursery, but you can name it anything of your choice. Now if you see closely, you look at it. Like you have a bunch of courses listed over here and you know, I have just pulled some of my videos from YouTube and showing over here. But the beauty of it, like as we build this particular platform together, you will be able to put any courses of your choice, any content of your choice and will be able to fetch that and put that on the screen the way that I'm going to teach you, right? So here I'm going to uh, teach you things conceptually one by one just follow this one so here we have five courses listed over here and each of these courses having certain data with it for example it has a thumbnail and it has a tag maybe or the type or category and then it's got a title it also got a price whether it's a free one or it has some kind of price tag along with it there is a search bar of course to search any of the courses and there is a static nav bar at the top and there is a footer at the bottom right it's very simple now the next interesting part is when you click on a course, what exactly happened? It gets to the details of that course. So now it's going to show you few more interesting details about the course. One thing is, of course, the description of the course, which was not there in the previous page. And then you can scroll down to see more information like there is a rating of this course. You get it for free. The course can run for 97 minutes. And then there are a bunch of comments that people would have given at the bottom, right? So this is good. Now, along with that, there is also another feature where you can add a comment by yourself. So you can go ahead and add a comment. So let me just go ahead and add a comment. Let's say, let me fake some name, maybe Mr. X and Mr. X email ID is x at x.com. And then rating, I'll give five and say great course, right? From Mr. X and then I'm going to submit this comment. I'm going to add this comment. Now what happened is like when you add a comment uh, on a public application, you might not want to publish that comment immediately. You want some administrator to look into that comment and see like whether it, is it a spam or some kind of legit comment or you know something like you know not very abusive and things like that and based on certain criteria you want to publish moderate and publish this comment. Okay, so we have a great moderation system we had have a great commenting comment management system that we'll be talking about when you talk about the back end of this application just stay tuned for that but let me quickly moderate this let me quickly publish this comment and come back and see like whether this comment will be available at the bottom or not at this point of time you won't be seeing this comment over here you don't see this comment but let me just quickly moderate and come back all right i have published the comment from the back end and you see that mr x comments is already there how I have moderated it, how I have done this, how am I doing this entire comment management, how I am doing entire content management. That's the crux of this video. So in this video, we are going to learn three fundamental things. One is content management system. How do you manage your content using an extraordinary tool called Casey? 
So very recently I came across this and I was just wow looking into the feature of Casey and thought like why don't I give it a try. In fact, I'm revamping my website and thinking like why don't I use KC as a backend for my website so that I can manage all the content on KC itself. And when, when I'm going to show you, you also will be able to understand the power of it and will be able to appreciate the power of it, right? And then once we have the content in a system, the next part that I'm going to do is like I'm going to teach you how to do GraphQL queries, how to do GraphQL mutation so that you can interact with the data and you can fetch the data, you can write the data into the system. And based on the APIs that you'll be building, then we'll be finally using them onto Next.js and try to build something using Next.js very latest version along with the app router, an application like this, what we are seeing in the screen. One disclaimer though, at the end of this video, I may not cover everything, all the styles, everything that you see in this application right now that might take a very longer time, but something that I leave out and leave it to you for the further implementation. The code that we'll be developing together will be available as an open source code. So you can always look into that. You can fork it, you can clone it and you can enhance it. In fact, if you are able to enhance this project, you know, by, you know, installing your own KC and then do this GraphQL stuff, build something on top of this UI and then submit back as a comment to this video, it will be really awesome. I would like to review your code and I would like to kind of give you comments about that. So why waiting? Let's get started with this development. I want to clarify a few things about content management system because this is not the traditional database or the traditional backend system that we are talking about. You usually know like how databases work, how the backend system work, but CMS is a bit different as a concept. So let us first spend some time understanding what is CMS and then try to understand what is headless CMS. Then we'll be getting into understanding and exploring what is KC, a beautiful headless CMS that you must give a try. Let's take a look what traditionally a CMS, a content management system means, okay, at a very high level, right? So you know what content means. Content at the end of the day is nothing but the data, the data that your application needs, right? Now, not everyone is a developer, not everyone who is like programming savvy. There will be people who are in marketing, there will be people who are in sales, but they might want to build something very quick without having much of the programming knowledge. And that's where if they get something which gives them the holistic understanding and holistic aspects of building things without even touching any code, which is really, really good, right? That's how the CMS was born. The content management system was born because it had the way that you can actually put your content. It can be like a content of a website where you need probably content of the navbar, content of the footer, then the actual content or could be a blogging site where you need to submit the articles, you know, for your blog, could be a marketing site, could be a retail site, it can be any site where the content is the king, right? You have to really put out the content in front of the user so that they can interact. But the people who are actually dealing with this content and making this them public, they may not be very tech savvy, right? In that case, they need a system where they just can go do some kind of drag and drop, start building things beautifully and then publish it, release it to the public so that user can start using that, right? So that's how the content management system, the requirement of the content management system came into picture. So you can have a content, of course, the content can be stored in a database so that the content can be persisted, it can be phased, it can be used and then you will have a bunch of tools or maybe the inbuilt code or inbuilt plugin that will allow you to integrate this content together, stitch this content together and make something useful. And at the end of it, you know, there will be a web server or there will be a server where you can host this entire stuff. And then finally, you know, it is available outside for someone to use, right? Using the URL or whatever it is. So in this, in this holistic picture, uh, you can see like the content, the storage of the content, even the tools, the code or the web server or the plugin, everything is come like a box to you. You just do certain configuration, do some drag and drop, write your content over there, publish it. The moment you publish it, boom, it is available you know, as a public thing for anybody to access. That's how for a long, long, longer time, the content management system traditionally worked. This is also called a monolithic content management system because you have everything like a big box inside it. But the problem with a traditional CMS is 
like for example if you want to improvise on the user experience side you want to improvise how the ui is going to look maybe a little bit different than what is allowed as a out of the box aspects from the traditional cms side you will be feeling like a bit handcrafted you will be feeling a bit limited because these are not so flexibly available for you to do any level of customization that you are actually planning to do that's that's a disadvantage of a monolithic or traditional cms and that actually gave a birth of a new cms concept called headless cms okay what is head what is body basically think in this way very simply head is nothing but the ui part that people usually see your customers usually see body is basically the content part the storage part okay so headless cms means the CMS is going to give you the exact infrastructure that you are seeing over here, but it is not going to give you those two things, the hosting and the way that the UI, the tooling system, those are up to the uh, somebody else, maybe some developers or maybe in between there is an organization who can actually interact with the content and interact with the database of, you know, the data of that particular content management system and can build their own UI. So this is a great flexibility, right? So today you might want to build something for a mobile devices. You might want to build something for an iPad tablet, or you want to build something for a larger screen or your use cases based on the data that you have in the content management system might be entirely different, completely based on what you think or your customer needs. So instead of getting into the limitation of a monolithic CMS, the headless CMS now expose your data and content through something called APIs. So which is great. So now what you have, you have the APIs through the API, the any UI outside can interact with all the content, all the database in the headless system and then make that available to your client. How beautiful is that, right? So it means that you can build the UI portion of it using any technology. For example, you can use React, you can use Angular, you can use uh, Vue or you can use Flutter, you can use React Native. It's completely up to you like what tech stack you are going to use, completely up to you what design you're going to bring because now you are not limited by what a cms provides out of the box you are free to build your own stuff so the fact that why i'm talking so much about headless cms because casey the the backbone of today's application is an head is a headless cms that we are going to explore so it means that it gives you the way to manage your content out of the box it gives you to manage your content the way that you want we are going to see that very very deeply you know using the application and it also provide you the apis so that you can actually fetch those data and then you can build any of the ui layer that you are planning to do for our case we'll be building using Next.js, and the api endpoints are available in form of graphql that's what we are going to see so you now can imagine like how these layers are going to stitch together okay so let me sh going to sh show you this one so this part is basically kz we are going to build this part using kz all the data all the apis everything provided by kz kz provide provide us a graphql api endpoint so we'll be utilizing that and then ui layer we are going to use nextjs and then finally we'll be deploying that we'll be hosting that on Vercel. Right, and then it will be available to access from anywhere. It can be accessed from a mobile device or anywhere, basically. So this is what we are going to build. I hope this is very clear, like how we are going to architect the solution, how we are going to design the solution, or each of the layer is very, very clear to you. So it's like this, you have Casey, where you have all the content, then you have the GraphQL API, we'll be interacting with the content. Then you have Next.js, we'll be doing the UI and finally we'll have the e-learning platform built for you. Now we are going to dip down in each of this layer. The first layer, the very important layer is our headless content management system, KZ, where we'll be configuring things. So what I want you to do as and when I'm doing, you can choose to do things along with me. I think that's great. As and when I'm configuring something, you can choose to do things along with me or you just go through it like what I'm doing pause on every logical end for example i am done with the cms you know thing like i am done with all the content creation and all this thing then you pause the video over there finish your content creation you also explore a bit with kz then i'll be getting into how to create the graphql queries how to put that into the code again then you do that part pausing the video and then i'll get into the front end to do the next js tailwind css stuff 
then you do the next year state win css and on top of that you improvise like whatever i'm teaching you do something of your own and then submit that as a project for me to review all right so let's get started with our understanding of the great headless cms kc friends it's time to understand what kc offers us uh, to do as a headless cms so you can go to kc.io or just check out the link i provided in, into the description um, and follow that link do a sign up and once you do a sign up you land into kc ui you don't need to do any installation locally you can just access the thing on the cloud and get started an important point to mention over here everything that i will show you with kc while building this application everything is available for free the basic plan that comes with kc is generous enough for you to explore in and out of kc and make use of all the features almost all the features of it in your application so this is great so when you actually build something on kc you can take advantage of its free plan and start building things as much as possible in case you are planning to build something really really huge and you have to really go for other plans you can explore them those are available under the pricing section over here at the top and good news is that uh, you can get a great discount around 20 percent discount on the pricing plan in case you are going for it just use the code i have made available in the description of this video all right as i have already logged in i can click on go to app to launch into the app so this is how the kc apps look like once you get into the app the first thing that you can do or you have to do is to create an organization and then create a project why because a content management system can help you managing multiple projects at the background right you are creating your website and the content for that or you are creating your uh, you know project for holding all of your courses you are doing a marketing side the content for that so whatever you want to do the content for that you can manage the multi as a multiple projects and you also can organize those projects into multiple organization i have already created an organization called tapas script if you want to create a new organization just click on create new organization give a organization name and your organization will be created once you have created an organization the next thing uh, you have to create a project so I have created a project called Course Ground, but before I go there, I am just going to show you like how can you create a project for yourself. So for that, you go to select an organization and then create a new project. Click on the new, create new project. Once you click on create new project, you can create project in three ways. For example, you can create a new empty project or you can create a project from an existing project. So for example, I have one existing project. I want to extend that and create a new project or kc provides you some out of the box templates based on various different technologies like nextjs nux astro slate quick gatsby you know and few others so you can actually select any of those and get started but uh, in our case let's uh, select the new empty project so we'll do a new empty project and can give a name of your project optionally you can upload an image because it will be easy for you to identify from the list of projects like if there is an image and say create project once you do that create project you will have a project like this the one that i have created over here called course ground you will have a project now let's get inside this particular project and see what it offers so when i am inside this project i can see a bunch of things already over here but once you create a new project and get inside that you won't see all these things over there you won't see all this content over there what you would see is everything is blank now let's understand let's get one by one to each of this you know navigation menu and understand what exactly it offers and how we can actually make use of them so first thing that i want you to focus on is something called blueprints what exactly blueprints are blueprints blueprints as the name suggests is something that's a very basic abstract level item like something like a schema based on that you can create your content if you are familiar with relational databases or sql no sql databases 
you usually create now somewhere it is based on schema somewhere it is you know schema less but where it is based on schema for example to create an user table which is having username uh, let's say email id the age and uh, th uh, details like that you will be having a schema like okay user id is a type string can have this many characters age is of type number and it can have this many uh, you know the maximum value can be this so you, you define your schema and based on your schema the data can be inserted into the table right similarly when you come to kz KZ provides you the option to create your own blueprints like a schema and then based on that blueprints you can create the actual content. So blueprints can be again of two different types. One is like documents and another is components. So documents are as the name suggests is basically a free flow documents where you can create as many fields possible and create your uh, content. The components are like documents, but the components, again, as the name suggests, is something which is more reusable stuff. For example, uh, in our case, as we have the courses and the comments, and comments is something which is like repeatable for each of the courses, I can create comments as a component and courses as the document, you know, things like that. So something which is like more reusable, repeatable items, you can create that as a component, you know, as a blueprint and otherwise everything else is like a document so what i have done over here is like i have created two blueprints one is for courses another is for components as the name suggests the course blueprint if i go inside it has its own definitions so it has category it has name cover description all this thing and also you see a type at the left of it now how have i built all these things it's very simple because right side you have all these field details now any field that you want you just need to drag and drop it over here and then give a definition of it so for example i have dragged and drop a boolean field and i can actually give a definition of it is say is sell on right so i am saying that on this course is there is a sale right now going on and then you have other fields like you have some advanced option you have some validations to put whether the field is required or not is a mandatory field or not you can have all these settings over here and after that you just do an apply and the fields gets created it's very simple so just do a drag and drop put certain definition and the field gets created okay. and then if you don't want a field you can always delete that field okay now let's let us get let us get accustomed to the type of fields that you you can create this is very important so few types string is very straightforward textual type so i have a name and category which is of type string then there is something called an asset type now if i go back to my blueprint i see there is already a system generated blueprint called asset this system generated blueprint asset is for actually defining all the images and that kind of media asset that kind of assets uh, into the system so that i can utilize those assets into any other content that i'll be creating so assets is an inbuilt system given out of the box blueprint when i'm creating my own blueprint for example course and i say i i need a thumbnail or a cover image i can just drag and drop an asset type thing so if i go to asset and try to see his setting i will see the setting is this you know these are the validations i have this and there's a there's a, again the advanced option and that's it it's pretty simple so asset is like this so when i am going to add an asset the adding an asset will be based on the asset blueprint over here so i have to give a name of the asset i have to give you know what are the field i can give all this details for that particular asset we'll see that when you create the content okay so now going back to the courses again i have asset type and then there is one more thing that i have to keep in mind is there is something called rich text field so when you add things like a description usually it is multi-line and you can also do something like a rich text for example a formatted text so if i go to advanced option of this I can enable the rich text feature so it means that uh, i allow user to kind of put a bold text put a bulleted li list, uh, give the heading, but I am not allowing user to put any attachment, any video or things, uh, video or things like that. But if you want, you can actually enable these things just by clicking on it. It's a completely your choice. Then I have applied this field. So again, the rich text field, you can drag and drop from here. Similarly, number field, similarly, date and time. I have used a bunch of fields like that. So you see this over here, how the courses 
blueprint has been created now quickly i'll go and explain you about the components field which is like our comments like so if i go to comments is pretty simple again i have the name email comments rating and commented on as the schema values so here this the name email are string straightforward comments where user can type down lot of comments is a rich text field then there is a rating which is like a number and the commented on the date that the user have commented is a date time field so now i have two blueprints one is courses another is comments very straightforward one now if i go to this blueprint once more uh, specifically the courses one there is one thing i didn't explain which is this something called connection field what is a connection field so you have two data point one is courses another is comments and you want to join them you want to make a relationship between them you want to connect them such that one course can have multiple comments right so in those cases you will be using something called a connection field so again you will be you can drag and drop the connection field i had drag and drop this connection field and created comments let's go to the setting of it and understand a name is comments and i allow a specific blueprint over here which is nothing but comments i can select it from here and then you know i don't think any other options that i have selected is very simple right so it means that a particular course can have multiple comments over here right this is how the thing is now the next thing after doing all this what you have to do for example if you make any changes for example i give a color field and color field i can give something like color type okay a color field color type i added a new field okay this is let's say a required field and advanced option and i didn't apply the moment i have added something do you see what happened it says the save the blueprint because right now i have not saved it only when i save the blueprint then only when you create any content based on that blueprint this schema will be available for you this field will be available for you until then this field is not going to available for you so this is clear the creation of blueprint is clear now what we are going to do we are going to create something called content okay i'll discard the changes now i'll be creating some content over here based on the blueprint five content created over here but i'm going to teach you like how to create a new content it's pretty simple now first content that i'm going to create is on course because i have only one blueprint under document that i've created right now is course so i'm going to go and create something called course so the moment i click on it it is going to uh, give me the option to fill it up uh, you know all the course details i can give a new course name i can give a new course category maybe the category could be react the name could be react clean code you get the point and then i can give a new cover image this is where i had taken an asset type now you can link to an existing asset these are that assets i have already uploaded into the into kc or if you don't have it right now you can actually link a new asset so let's link uh, as a let me take a random picture for a moment uh, i'm just trying to figure out a better one maybe this one let's create this you know asset is getting uploaded right now it's got uploaded now you can go ahead and edit it further that's the beauty of it this particular picture you can now edit it for example you can change the title of it or better you can edit the image itself like you want to do a you know crop of the image so you can just drag and drop crop this image you want to put some kind of uh, settings for increasing the contrast brightness saturations all this thing right and then you can finally save this one as a new image or you can override the current one so this is really really beautiful this is really really powerful option for you to utilize so i'm done this particular one what i'll do i'll just publish this one so that i can use it i come back to react clean code it got this asset and then i can do what i can actually fill up rest of the details for example if i want to go to description if you remember the type that i had selected is called rich text that's why it is giving you a rich text editor so that you can type it it it's a course you can even do like bulleted text you can mark the thing as bold you know uh, whatever like options that you had selected at that point of time you can do it price is a number so you can give only a number the date fields will allow you to select the dates duration will allow you to select the number so like that you can actually keep giving now this comments 
I told this is the this is a referential field. So it means that you can now link one course to any number of comments, multiple comments. So you can actually link to any of these existing comments. If you see, I have comments over here. If I go inside comments, this is a bunch of comments I already have in the system. I can, if I want, I can pull any of the comment and link a comment as a selected comment. This is very powerful. This is very good. Or I can actually create a new comment and then I can uh, link to it. But as per our use case, we'll be doing these things from the UI. So at this point, I'm not too much bothered about uh, manually linking a comment to the course. We'll be doing this more programmatically. But assume that you will be able to fill up all these details. And once you do this, you just click on the publish so that your this content is published. Okay. Now, we will not publish this one. We are going to go and check any of our existing content. As you see over here, React Clean Code we have created. It is in the draft mode because we have not published. As we have not published, it is not available for us to kind of fetch from any external system through the API. Only the content that I, we have published, those are available for me to interact using API and get it from the UI. We'll be seeing that. So let's look into one of the content which I have created already. For example, I'll go to React Hooks 101. So it has a category called React. It has a name. It has a cover photo. It has a description. If you see over here, it has a price, when it was published, when it was updated last time, what was the duration, the link to the course, what kind of type is a playlist, and what are the comments that people have already provided for this one. All these comments are published and the slug value so that I can use it as an URL, right? So this is pretty powerful. Similarly, if I go to components and see the content got created for comments, pick up any of the comments, for example, this one, it says like, you know, the name of the person who has given the comment, the email, what kind of comment the person has given, the rating and when the comment was on. So like this, a content management system, a headless content management system is helping you to create whatever the content you want and publish it on demand and then make it available for anyone to build anything on top of the data that you are creating so for our use case where we spoke about our number of courses and their details and the comments that we see over there how we can imagine this to build is like we will be retrieving all these details from casey and then once we get inside the, this this particular course, we are going to show all these details again from the KZ. And then we'll allow user to add a comment at the runtime. And once user add a comment at the runtime, we'll go back to KZ and moderate the comment. And once the comment is moderated, we'll come and see the comment is appeared over here. That's what we're going to see. And all the interactions are going to happen using GraphQL API. All right. So now let's let's spend some more time looking into a few of the other features and see like why are we doing this and what is the what is the motivation behind doing things like this. Let's say like you are managing a website or a marketing site. Tomorrow, if there is a content comes right and you have, uh, somebody has to put a marketing content, maybe or maybe a blog for for a matter. So what what the person will do? They are just going to go inside the content and create a new content over here, right? They, they are just going to come here and create a new content over here. So for example, I can go to React Clean Code itself and provide all the required contents over here and, and publish. The moment I publish, what will happen if I come back and refresh my UI over here? I am going to see a new content, a new content appeared over here. So this is the beauty of it, right? So the person who is actually managing the content, that person really don't have to bother about how to handle these things in the UI, how to handle these things in the GraphQL layer or the API layer. They are just bothered about how to manage this content into my content infrastructure, content management system. And the moment I publish that content, my UI is already written in a way, the template in a way that it is going to fetch the details and going to show the details onto the UI, right? So we are going to see that as well as and when we will be going through the implementation cycle. Okay, so a few more things about uh, KZ over here. Uh, we'll be getting into the API mode and try to understand like how to leverage the API. But before that, if you want to interact with KC as a developer, you have to go under settings and get an API key. How to get an API key? Let's learn that. You have to go inside development and here you have to click on create API key. But what is this API key for? When you are dealing with KC's external APIs using GraphQL for the project that you have created, for example, we have created a project and we created content for that in KC. Now you want to deal with that content using an external API like the GraphQL API 
in that case you have to create an api key casey also provides certain internal apis but if you want to deal with the internal apis this api key is not going to work in that case you have to create something called a personal token so for that you have to go inside profile and then create your personal tokens but before we see that let us first see how this api key works for the external apis like the graphql apis so you have to go ahead and create api key by clicking on this button give a meaningful name of the api key and get the api key one point to note over here is like once you create the api key you should be copying and preserving your api key carefully because once the api key has been created you cannot view it later point of time for example i have created an api key over here there is no way i can view it i can only delete it and recreate this api key a new api key i can create so api key is for the external apis like the graphql apis but if you want to deal with cases internal apis like certain apis that for the multiple projects that you have created for those things you can go to profile and then click on personal tokens then you can create that token and after creating the token you can use that for cases internal apis hope this is clear next thing that we are going to show you is something called playground is another important feature playground is available over here go click on playground so what is playground whatever content that you have created to okay based on the blueprints that you have created in kc everything is now available as an endpoint for you so that you can query on them and fetch the data using graphql so this playground is a graphql playground which you can actually play around to get what kind of query or what kind of mutations that you want to put on top of your data so that you can play with your data let me show you a very quick example for example i have a bunch of courses right so i'll go to all courses as you see like um my asset blueprint my comments blueprint my courses blueprint already over here and there are already some uh, all courses all comments and all assets query handle for me so that i can actually get into them and kind of play around with my data i can add a new query at any point of time or i can add a new mutation at any point of time mutation again it is about creating the object deleting the object and editing the object query is about fetching the data right so i'll go and select all comments or no i'll go and select all courses and then i'm going to select all the courses data so if you want to do that it will be available inside edges and then you expand node inside node you will see like all those attributes that i had created for you know my course are available so i'm going to retrieve id i'm going to retrieve duration i'm going to retrieve name or and the slug for a moment and the price maybe okay i'm not i'm not retrieving any other details and then i'm going to click on execute it is going to execute and give me the details of all the courses that are there in the kc cms so the first one is js function course content creation react hook modules js async programming you, you have everything now have you noticed that i had the react clean code one i have created i put it in the draft but didn't publish as i didn't do it it is not appearing over here so only published courses i can fetch now using this query and i can get these details details i can utilize to build any ui layer that i would like to build right so this playground is again pretty powerful so for example everything that you try out right now it's available in your history so you can actually bring back any of the things from the history and again fire that the way that you want you can also pass any specific header that you would like to see and uh, and you like to kind of utilize so that header you can pass and kind of get the data accordingly so spend some time using this playground so that you can actually play with your data and then you can see like how it can be utilized into your graphql query so i hope that you understood things about uh, casey very well it is it's a very very easy to use product and tool that's what i would say um i'm i feel great that i have found this one and i'm able to kind of use it to uh, build a backend system in front of uh, that i can create any api layer i can create any ui layer to build something really cool stuff so please spend some time now at this moment i want you to kind of take a break go to kc try out the url in the description that i have provided go and log in and then try to create a document try to create a component go to playground play around with your data a bit then go to settings 
go to the development option create your api key get ready with it up next we are coming up with how to set up the graphql portion of it so that programmatically we will interact with the data that you have created in kc system okay so let's do that great we are done with the data creation we are done with our content creation and also the understanding of how graphql endpoint works now it's time that we start writing code to interact with this endpoint so that we get access to all those data we can query all those data that we have created in kc and start using them in a next.js application first thing we are going to do is to create a next.js application using the npx create next app command and after we start and after we get this project created we will start writing the graphql code into that and then use the graphql portion into the next.js application straight away all right so let's get started with this command so i'm just going to execute this it's going to ask me a few things yes i'm okay to proceed so let me give a name of this project so i've given the name as Coursery. you can give any name yes i want typescript of course i want eslint i want tailwind css no, I don't want SSC directory. Yes, app router, of course. Import LSS, no. So it's going to take some time and create the project for me. That's great. So I'll go inside Coursery and I have all the projects related files got created. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to import this project into Visual Studio Code and start coding. Here I have the project in the VS Code so I can go to a terminal open a new terminal and just do yarn dev so the project is running on localhost 3000 all right so let me go ahead and access localhost 3000 and see yeah it got some basic uh, ui that you know the next yes, uh, this particular project has come up with everything will be available inside uh, app folder page.tsx so this is the code that comes by default and this is what rendering we we'll look, look into all this code at a later point of time this is not our focus area right now our focus area is about getting the GraphQL stuff get going and see like how we can actually start getting data from KZ. So let us focus on that part first. We will need two dependencies to add to interact with GraphQL. Those two dependencies are GraphQL and the GraphQL request. So npm install first is GraphQL, GraphQL request. So we need these two dependencies to be installed so that we can interact with graphql so those two dependencies has got installed if i go to package.json yeah i am seeing both of them over there okay up next what we are going to do we are going to do we are not talking about next.js yet at all okay we are just talking about the graphql layer so I, what i'm going to do inside app i am going to see like okay there are things like page.tsx and layout.tsx which i am not much bothered about it right now so outside app i'm going to create a folder and the folder name i'm giving as service this is where what i'm going to do i'm going to initialize my graphql client okay so i'm going to create a file called graphql client.ts and inside this file i'm going to do all the magic okay so let us create the graphql client first so this is the code for the graphql client and i'm going to explain to you uh, line by line it's pretty straightforward so first thing is like i have imported graphql client i don't need gql over here and this code snippet is already available in cases documentation where you can also grab that but let me explain that to you uh, very clearly so i have imported graphql client from graphql request and then i have a function called get client basically it is going to return our graphql client and I'm using a header called XKC API key. This is very important. You know, in our previous section, when we spoke about the API key, I asked you to kind of take the API key. So if you take the API key, then in your environment variable, in a .env file, just create an entry with a key called KC API key equals to your the value. So basically, you can have that API key in your environment variable. And then you can access that API key using process.env over here and this is the header that you are passing over here right it's very simple and then along with that you can also run your client in the preview mode the case supports something called a preview mode the advantage of the preview mode what i found is like once you use a preview mode to create a content you also get 
uh, or all the details of the required details of that particular documents that you have created in on KC, you can get that ID and all other details, which is useful because for example, take a use case, like I'm creating a comment for a course and after creating a comment, I want to get the comment ID so that I can attach that comment ID to a course, right? So I want to get that ID. I want that ID to be returned. So because of that, I can also use a preview mode and the preview mode is a Boolean I'm passing through here. So if I'm doing get client passing through, the client will be running in the preview mode to give, give me the details. Otherwise, it is as usual, as usual. And the next thing that I'm going to do is like client equals to new GraphQL client. I'm instantiating it. This is the URL case URL that you have to use for the GraphQL. And if you, if you see over here, I'm also passing the project ID. Now, how can you find the project ID? If you come to KZ, you know, interface and then go to settings from there, you go to projects, general settings. Here you get the project ID. You can copy this project ID and then you can actually start using it. Again, both the project ID and the API key should go to the environment variable. So it's go to the .env file and then you should be accessing it over here. And now this is going to give me the client. So the client portion is, I hope, very clear. Now the next what we are going to do, we are going to use this client and then connect to the endpoint that Kaizi provide us and going to retrieve both the course and the comment details one by one in the in the API layer, in the data layer. We have still not touched anything about the UI yet. As we have the client now, the next thing that we're going to do, use this client and try to interact with the data. So we have a data folder over here inside the data folder. I'm going to create a file called course.ts. In this file, we will be now fetching all the courses. Okay. So first thing first that we need, we need the client to be imported. So we'll first import the client and then I'll be creating a function say export const get all courses equals it's an async call so it's an async async function and we will have a function like this okay so first thing that we'll be doing is getting the client const client equals to get client of course and we'll be passing a false because we don't want a preview mode here so just going ahead with the non-preview mode um, we're getting the client after getting the client the next thing that will be doing is we want to send a request so we'll be do, doing things like that client dot sending the request okay now once we send a request of course we'll get a response and using the response we can extract the data uh, from our uh, data store from the kaisi we will get the data so for that we have to form a request body i'll get to that but before we get to request body and talk about it we first need to form a GraphQL query and that GraphQL query is what we need to pass in a request so that we get a response. So to form the GraphQL query, we need GQL, GQL. If you remember, we installed two things over there. One was kind and another as a GraphQL request. So we'll say GraphQL request. Okay. Now using GQL, you can actually request. So I'll be passing gql query and you inside the back tick you have to specify the query now the next part is like as we are doing getting all courses we will see the query to retrieve all the courses we'll go to kc we go to the playground we'll try out the query and the same query will bring here do the copy paste and we'll fire the stuff okay so let's do that so here goes the playground here we are looking for all courses right so i'll expand all courses inside courses we have ages Inside edges, we have node. We have seen this. Okay, so what are the things we are interested in picking? We are interested in picking a course ID, a course name, maybe a price of the course, uh, could be the slug we are looking for, and our cover image inside cover will have an SRC. Yes, the cover image. Mostly, these are the things that we are actually looking for. Um, another thing that we can do is maybe category because if you want to show the category in the list page. I got the category. Now, if I fire this query, I got all these details, right? Now, if you see here how the construct is of the response, construct is like I have all courses. Inside all courses, I have ages one, of course, one array. Inside ages, I have each of this node, right? So this is how the construct is. Uh, so 
let's go ahead and first start using this query so what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this query like this all courses to this so i'm going to copy this one and then i'll go back over here and i'm going to write all my query inside this back ticks as i told so we'll be do like query so query you do to do any kind of fetch from uh, the data store using graphql give a name you can give any name here all courses and then inside this you just put the query i'll just format this portion a bit okay i have formatted so i'm saying that i'm now requesting to make this call and then fetch the data from it of course this call will be another asynchronous call so what it returns it will return a graphql response all right so you have this simple now the next thing that we are going to do over here we got the response from this response we have to extract the data and we have to send back the data so what we can do over here we will do a return and we will return an object the object will have data over here we will have graphql response okay and then we will have all courses from all courses we get the edges right and if the edges are not available by or undefined we will just return an empty array so if you see over here why i am doing graphql response dot all courses dot edges if we go back to our playground see the response response is all courses after all courses you have edges correct all courses we have edges and edges is what is going to return an array of all the courses each of this thing is each of the course details so i will get this response now i am using um, optional chaining here so that you know i don't have to do any other extra if else check so this is good but this is giving an error because i have not defined any type for this okay for now i'm just putting it as any so that i can test it fast so this is done this particular uh, portion is done now it's time that i'm going to test this out so it means that i have to make a call to this course you know the get all courses function and see like it is really returning me all the courses from kc or not so let's do that so it's time to talk about nextjs a bit we are using the latest version of nextjs along with app router and i'll be explaining you uh, a few thing about nextjs very very basic things about nextjs so that you know you keep that in mind so one of the basic thing about it is like as it is using app router is a file based router so it means how it works inside the app folder if you have a page.tsx that's going to define your top route so this is my page.tsx file which is having all this code because of that you are able to see this so first thing i'm going to do is to remove all this code because i don't need them so now if you want to create a sub route called say courses what i'll be doing i'll be creating a folder called courses under the app folder and inside that again i'll be creating a file called page.tsx file let's create a simple component const courses equals to return let's put a h1 and finally i can do export default of this is done now if i access slash courses as a route i see this courses coming here so it is very simple to create a route sub route and things like that even if you want to handle error you can create a error.tsx file if you want to handle loading you can create loading.tsx file all this all this in depth next js part i'll be covering in a different video but here i want to kind of at least scratch the surface so that, so that you get an idea this is the way i can actually create uh, the routes and the next thing that you can i want to talk about is how can we do data fetching because just now i have created a method like get all courses which faces so right now i have created a method called get all courses which actually fetches all the details from kc all the content from kc now i want to do is like i want to use that into my page.tsx into my top route like over here so that i can actually get those, get those details and start printing over there so that's my objective a few things i have to talk about um one is about react server component so if you're new to react server component i have a full fledged video about react server component you can go ahead and start check about react server component but fact over here is like 
Imagine it's a component, but it is more co-located to your server than the client. It means that as it is co-located to server, not the client, it can fetch the data much more faster than your client components. So in this case, I can actually f use the data fetching on the server component in such a way that I can call my server methods directly. So what are my server methods here over here? So my server methods is get all courses because it deals with the doing a GraphQL query, uh, interacting with um, Cassie at the backend. So I can actually call this directly into my page.tsx. Without React server components, this wouldn't have been possible. What you had to do, you had to create a use effect, you have to manage the state using use effect, then you have to make a fetch call using use effect, and then you have to get the uh, data, and then you have to update your state, and that's how things are used to be. But right now, what we are going to do, we are going to make this call directly. Now, to do that few stuff, first I will import, uh, this is my course.ts. So from, and my method name is get all courses. Okay, fair enough. Now, if you check the get all courses is, uh, let's go here. Okay, get all courses is an async, async method, right? So async function. So it means if I have to call this async function, I have to use the keyword call await. The moment I use the await keyword, it means that I have to make this function as async. Okay. And then whatever is the return, I'm putting it in a variable. And next thing is I am going to do a console.log of courses. Now see what happened. Do you see what happened over here? You get all the courses, the course data. The course data is an array and I have five courses, one, two, three, four, five in uh, CMS. We have seen there were five courses and each of the courses data that I'm over, you know, able to get and print over here. Now, if I go to browser console for a moment and if I go to the console tab, I don't see any of this. Even, you know, if I refresh, I don't see any of this, but I was seeing my all this log was coming to over here on my where I'm running the server, my local server. It, this is this is also another proving point that we are running react server components, not the client components. Had it been a client components, I would have seen the log over here, but it is a server component. That's the reason I'm seeing the log over here. OK, so I have get I'm get I'm now able to make a GraphQL call to Kazi and able to retrieve all the courses and able to print it in the log of the server. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is to create the UI and utilize this information that I'm getting into my UI side of it, right? So for that, let me do, let me import one more thing from Next.js is called link. Link is, is an out of the box, utility component from Next.js that helps you to link one page to another. So I have imported the link and inside this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this for now. Inside this, what I'm going to do, I'll be putting things over here. Let's iterate through the array. So we'll be doing courses. And if you remember, it had something called data inside that, that was the array. And now I'm, I'll be doing a map out of it. In each iteration, I'll get a course element and of course an index and then it will be an arrow function okay so this is the structure of course index is index of course index is a number and course can be any okay now what i'll be doing on each of the iteration i want to create something called a link capital l i n k link okay now what is this link this link is an utility component from Next.js to link one page to another. I just imported that link and link takes a few attributes. One attribute is href, href equals to, I'll take each of these courses and each, in each of the course, um, we'll have something called a slug. So I will just use that. So href equals to dollar or you can use ID also. Slug is like more human readable. ID is like maybe an EU ID or things like that. So I'll have, okay, I have this HRDF. And also I can use a key because I'm iterating through equals to, I'll just copy this guy. And instead of slug, I can use an ID as a key. And then inside the link, what I'll be doing, the first thing that I'm trying to retrieve 
maybe I'll be retrieving the cover image. Let's retrieve the cover image and try to show. So I'll create a div and inside this div, so far everything is good. No, there is an error. So let me just, okay, this came in the next same line. So that was the error. What I'll be doing is over here is like, let's create the, create the image. Uh, let's use the image of Next.js and image takes an src attribute right inside src attribute i'll take each of the courses go inside the node inside the node i'll have something called cover that's how i've given the name and inside cover i have src now image needs so giving some alt tag this let's give some width maybe 320 let's give some height maybe 300 i have saved it i see all the images coming here this is beautiful so now have i have the things end to end right from nextjs app router nextjs page i am now making a graphql call directly the graphql call actually making a query to kc backend and kc is giving me back the details i'm iterating through each of these details and i'm kind of printing these things now what happen if i click on it is it a link right if i click on that what happen if i click on this thing it's giving me a 404 right that's fine it's giving me a 404 but it is giving the slug correctly it is giving the js function course is where it is supposed to go but i don't have this page created yet right i'll be creating that page in a moment but i don't have this page created yet i can also do like apart from you know the images i can start adding few other details as well for example i can always add a name let's add a course name i'll do like p maybe a paragraph tag and then do course then node dot name right so i have also added a course name i am seeing the course name over here right javascript function content you know javascript module and all this thing. so this is good now if you start putting some styles you know on tailwind with tailwinds you know on top of this you can put the flakes and all these things you can actually rearrange things pretty well right so this is good this is this is pretty good now the thing is like what we want to do next is this is okay i'm just showing the name and the image but what i'm going to do next is like on click on this i want to go to the next page and after going to the next page i want to show more details maybe i want to show that particular video details or video link all these things i want to do now if i click on this it is going to a route but the route is not found now if you notice clicking on each of these pieces clicking on each of these pieces is going to a new url a, a, a dynamic url so the route that we are looking for here is something called a dynamic route. So the next thing that what we're going to do, we are going to create a dynamic route. Now to create a dynamic route, what you have to do, and I need the route right below the top level, right? Top level is app, okay? This slash courses I have created just for an example. I can delete that. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a route. For that, I have to create a folder. And for dynamic route, you can actually start with the subscript notation and then give a name all right and inside id now what i'm going to do create a file page.tsx good good enough now here i am going to do const course details equals to just create the component first you have the course details now if i go and click on any of these things okay i have not exported this so let's export okay now if i click on any of this you see it is going to course details it is going to course details it is going to course details everything is going to the course details. it's very simple to create the pages but for clicking on each of this thing it is going to course details which is not good now we have to really make a dynamic page in the dynamic route so that the proper course details it it can fetch and proper course details it can give us right so let's do that okay so for that what we have to do let us we are when you are clicking on this we are actually passing a slug right we have we have to first get this slug into this component and taking this slug now we can make another call another graphql call to fetch all the details about that particular course and put that thing over here just you know display all the details about that course over here can you do that okay let's do that we have to do few things some changes over here so we have to do something uh, to get this extra identifier over here um so for that every component gets a params and the id so we'll get a params and from params we can actually get our we can get the 
id that is a string correct so you can get this thing now what i do i'll do a console dot log of params dot id okay do you see what happened it prints js function course this particular slug i'll click on function course you have you know uh, i'll go to function course you have function course so everything is kind of coming all the slugs are coming now next thing that i can do is like taking this param dot id now i can make another graphql call instead of fetching just the thumbnail and the name i can now fetch all the details i can fetch video link details i can fetch the price of it i can fetch all the available comments of it everything that i can actually start fetching right so for doing that what i'll be doing i have to go to my course.ts file and i have to have another method called get course instead of get all course which will take that id and taking that id i will modify my query and the query will give me only a particular uh, course details right now to do that in our playground so this is my all courses right now if i want a particular course so that is where i will be banking on this where clause so where i can put any kind of query over here for example i can put the slug the slug equals to if i do and if i just take only one slug from here and i put this slug value and i'll just adjust this yeah so then execute what i get only that particular course details i already know how to retrieve this slug value now i can actually write another function that will make another query and that query i can pass this guy this particular slug based on this slug it is going to fetch me all these details and that details now i can actually fetch more details instead of just id name price everything i can just get all other details like type published on link duration everything i can get and when i do execute is going to give me this one right so let's see like how i'll be uh, writing a method to query like this all right let's take a look into the get course method okay so get course method now take an identifier or a slug as usual like before i got a client then i am forming the client dot request and then i am actually making this query now look at the query the same way where we have passed the where clause i am passing this particular slug and then i my below query is exactly same whatever i have tried in the playground right i'm just pasting that particular query and the slug whatever is coming right through the parameter you know i that has got passed as an argument i am passing it over here and this will be you have to pass as a variable to your graphql you know request so you are passing as a variable so the request the first example we have seen like it was just taking the query but if the query is parameterized because of this like we have a slug we are passing this as a parameter if the query is parameterized you also have to pass a variable like this now from the response you can always get like you know uh, the response ages you know the first element it will be always returning one because the slug is un unique and you are getting the node and you are getting basically the object which is exactly the same thing over here right we have done this object that is what is getting returned so in the first object the node would be your first on the course which is like matching okay so this is good this one uh, as a get course so similarly we can now go to this one or course details import this is the fun like you have your graphql stuff ready the moment it is ready you can come to your component and you can start importing them and start using it so import this is what we are going to do now of course uh, we have to make the get, get course call so we will do get course we will be passing param dot id okay that params dot id this all good but this is again an async call so you have to give await and as you are giving await we have to make this particular function call as async so i am going to do this as async and then it will give me a response right so let's take that response into a variable and let's do a console dot log of that now i am going to go to my console and see what is happening did you see what's happening now i am getting the exactly the entire data details it is a category of javascript this is the cover this is the description duration id link name price every information that i wanted to show in the 
course detail space i am getting what happen if i just uh, you know toggle between different courses if i go over here so i got everything about the javascript module crash course right because i am in the javascript module crash course now if i come back and go to this one javascript synchronous asynchronous so javascript asynchronous programming i got everything about javascript asynchronous programming so now are you seeing like how are you able to kind of stitch and tie things together the next thing possibly you will do is pretty simple stuff is like you just render this the way that you want in your next js um component so that you get all these details over here so for example if i want after course details i can just say p of so if you want what you can do over here just put a div and inside that let's create a h1 and do course data dot name right you have javascript async programming over here like that you can now you know put all your comments iterate them through and put all the comments that are available you can again put the cover image you can put the description you can put the link you can put the name everything that you want you can actually put this is very good this is very very nice thing so i'm not going to get too much deep up you know showing like how to retrieve and how to kind of uh, show each of this data into ui you can actually go ahead and start um, explore it yourself you can actually start building also this entire project is available as an open source the comment is there in the description so you can just pull that comment out and you can actually take take a look into the code but this is the basic fundamental things whatever you got now one more thing that i want to kind of quickly showcase is uh, if you remember like the description of a course was not a simple string it was a rich text editor and the rich text editor you can use bold italics a different kind of things in ksc now once you retrieve it you also want to retrieve it in a proper format and for that if i go inside the description if you see inside description there is a json object it is not simple text field or sim not simple text thing that you got so you also have to handle these things in a bit differently and because of that you have to use a particular library that library is provided by kc itself so what i am going to do is now i am going to install that library first in pm install and install this library called kc slash rich, rich text react renderer so once you install this okay it's got installed now you can come here and then import this you have import this one the next thing that you have to do is write up a name you can use this as rich text renderer it takes an attribute called node and over here you can put like course data description and if you remember description has a json so just pass that json now you see you have retrieved the description right with all the emojis and things like that had i made any of the uh, text italy uh, or bold it would have come like that itself right so this is another thing that i wanted to kind of touch base if you are working with kc as a backend so this is pretty important so far we have seen the example of queries now we'll be seeing a few things about mutations so again if you come to kc uh, playground you can actually select the mutation option and add the uh, allowed mutation so in that case when i have added i am seeing like i can do create comments create courses delete comments delete courses update uh, comments update courses now you can select any of them for example if i am to do update course i can go like for an update course let's take an id for an example and then i want to update the description and then after updation of that i want to retrieve the details like you know these things i want to retrieve so what i'm saying like go find out a course with this id and for this course update the description and after updation you return this value of that course to me now think about a use case so if i go over here and i was putting certain comments right i was adding certain comments to a course so in that particular time you are adding a comment to a course so it means that first you will be creating this comment you will get a comment id after getting the comment id you will be taking that comment id and update this course by adding that comment id to it right so it means that you will be doing two mutation operations so here you will be first creating a comment get the id of it and after getting the id of that comment you come to the particular course find that by course by id and you put an input as that particular comment id and then you add that comment to that course so that is how the mutation works the next thing we want to see about how this comment moderation can happen uh, from the front end till the back end right 
So let me go to this particular course, for example, that React Hooks 101. And in this course, I will go and add a comment. Say Alex B. And then he is having an email called alex.b at hotmail.com. And adding a comment of this is a great course. And then I'm adding this over here. But as usual, I'm getting like, you know, thank you for that. We'll moderate and publish it. And it's not get added over here. How do we handle this? So you go to Casey and we will go to the content. And once you go to the content, we see a few stuff. Okay. So we'll go to our comments. We see this Alex B over here. Do you see Alex B over here? So Alex B is coming and it's there as a draft. So there is no auto publish. It is not published automatically, and which is good, which is good because if it is, if it had got published automatically, whatever the user is uh, inserting as a comment that would have got published automatically. We don't want that. Now I have made this comment for react hooks 101. So if you see react hooks 101, the status is showing change. It means that there is certain attribute, certain data that has got changed. So if I come over here, I know the change is basically the comment. So I see this Alex B's comment is there as a draft. Also, I see this publish button is enabled. So what I can do now, I can click on this publish and I can select this comment and I can publish this comment. So this step is very important. And again, I can go to Alex B and publish this comment itself. Now, if I come back, so until then my comment was not there. If I come back now and just refresh my screen and if I scroll down, I will see Alex B's comment has got added. So the moderation workflow is also very important and Casey takes care of that pretty well. It's, it's handled that pretty well. It's basically, you yourself take this call of how to handle the things well, whether you want to take this comment or you want to delete this comment, you do all the stuff, right? So which is great. The last thing that I want to, last couple of things I have to talk about Casey over here and then we'll do a overall recap of what we did. The one thing is like once you go to settings and once you go to development, you also have an option called locales. This is a beautiful part of a CMS and especially the CMS which support localizations. Your clients, people that you are building for may not be just from the English language or that territory. They can be from anywhere in the globe and may speak and understand a different kind of language. So Casey support to add a completely new locale of your choice. You can go ahead and add a new locale, give it a name, select a language from this list and then create a language you know language local for you for example i've created for bangla which is like my mother tongue and this particular language key the bn you can actually use to retrieve any kind of data of for that particular local so for example if i go to this explorer and you see here i can pass a local i can pass a local as bn so now the data that I am going to retrieve over here is this particular local supported, right? So for based on the local that I am receiving from the client side, I can actually pass that local back to my query and that query can retrieve me that local specific data in that particular language so that my UI, my application can be rendered. So the localization support is kind of inbuilt in KC, which is really op an awesome thing. Then the other thing that I am going to show you is about releases so for example if you're again in a, in a in a marketing team in a digital marketing or you are in sales or even if you have your own website you might want to create some of the content in advance and you want to schedule them you don't want to come and create the content the day you want to go live for example if you have a newsletter you don't want the newsletter to create on the day when it has supposed to go live rather you want to keep it upfront and make it uh, like schedule it for a release and publish right so for example you can create any content and that content you can actually create a release for example i created a release over here like on 19th august i want some four entries to go and go for as a publish right or it goes automatically published i am not going to manually publish them at all so this is a great advantage like when you have something called releases where you can create your content ahead and put it for a schedule and a particular schedule is go ahead and just get released and as your ui is built like a template fashion the one that we have seen like you know we have created a course list page a course details page with the data the ui has never changed as and when the new content comes the new content start appearing over here this is the beauty of it this is the great thing about uh, using a cms at your back and build your website build your marketing site using the some kind of template in the front and in between you have a power of api to fetch the data to recap 
Uh, I just want to say like we of course we didn't complete the end to end uh, you know UI over here but we have given you enough data I've given you enough data so that you can start fulfilling those things yourself like you know now how to really play around with KC to create the content you know like how to play with the playground to fetch the data now you know like how to do the GraphQL uh, FPI call to get the data and then you know like how to use those services into your Next.js page directly to build the UI right the next thing is about you can learn like a bit of CSS or Tailwind to make those UI much more beautiful and even you have this particular project available with you the complete project available with you as an open source so you can always fork it import it and start seeing like you know how you can enhance this one or even create a new functionality to it and if you do that please post it I'll, i'm going to kind of review that i hope it makes sense all right friends let's learn about deploying this app so you can find this entire project as a github repository on my github uh, the name is Corsi. Right now, the repository is private, but I'm going to make it public soon so that you all can access it. And all the code base are inside the folder called site. Okay. So this is a Next.js app and everything that we have coded, for example, the service, GraphQL client, then our client.ts sex file, and then, you know, all other uh, files, the entire, you know, working app is over here. Now, what we'll be doing is like we'll be deploying this application on Vercel. You can also deploy it on uh, Netlify or any, any other hosting services. I'll assume that you would have forked this particular repo. And once you fork this repo, you create an account with Vercel, log in, and then do add new project. You will be able to find the repo over here to import. Just import it. And after that, select the root directory as site because our projects project source files are under site folder and then add the environment variable because if you remember we had two environment variables we'll be adding them over here you know can say project id can say api key make sure that you have added your own you know id and the key and right after that you just need to do deploy here the deployment is done the ui is up and running and i can actually visit the site now and launch the app i'm visiting the site the app will be launched the app is launched over here uh coursery.versal.app where the application is right now you know running so i can access the application over there so it is very straightforward you just need to provide those environment variable that's all about it so friends i hope you learn something new so what we did we actually uh, created content in a backend system and then we learn how to write the apis and we use some of these apis into our next.js app router uh, of course, we have not built the entire application because that's going to take a long time. So we have this reference point and we have the remaining uh, code base with you. Uh, it's in the description of this particular video. So you can actually utilize that and then you can start creating, you know, things of your own. Keep learning and try out KC, try out GraphQL, try out Next.js app router. I'm going to come back soon with much more interesting videos. Until then, take a great care of yourself. See you soon.